This is the first section of a series of sagittal sections that we are going to study. This is the most lateral of the sections that we have. It shows the head, the thorax, separated by the diaphragm from the abdomen. Here is the anterior aspect and here is the posterior aspect of the body. The largest structure that can be seen here is the liver and it lies just beneath the right dome of the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm, the thoracoabdominal diaphragm. Below the liver and just behind it is part of the kidney, the right kidney. And of course between them is the hepatorenal pouch. Also in this section we can see here this is part of the large intestine, the cecum, the ascending colon and more anteriorly is a loop of small intestine. In the anterior abdominal wall, you can see the three muscles here, the external oblique, the internal oblique, and the transverse abdominus muscle. Note that the transverse abdominus muscle continues superiorly with the diaphragm. Here, these are sections in the costal cartilages at the costal margin. Inferiorly, this is the hip bone, the iliac fossa containing iliacus muscle. This is the region of the iliac crest here. So the iliac crest, the hip bone, the iliac fossa, and the iliacus muscle attached to it. This is the next sagittal section. You notice that we are going deeper in the head, in the thorax, and in the abdomen. In the region of the abdomen, we can see here the costal cartilages, the diaphragm, below it is the liver again, and here we can see more of the kidney. The cortex of the kidney is clear, so as the medulla, these are the pyramids, and this is the region of the sinus of the kidney where the minor calyces, major calyces, and the renal pelvis are located. Below is the hip bone, and here is the iliacus muscle. Posteriorly, the muscle here is quadratus lumborum that extends between the 12th rib and the iliac crest, and behind it are the muscles of the erector spiny muscle. Inside the abdominal cavity, this region is the cecum here, and these are loops of small intestine. You can see this, is, this piece belongs to the transverse colon. And again, the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. In the iliac fossa, this is the iliacus muscle here. This is the third section in our series of sagittal sections. You can see here, this is the diaphragm. This is the region of the central tendon of the diaphragm, in fact, and below it is the liver. You can compare the size of the liver here in this section with the size of the liver in the previous two sections. Of course, here the size of the liver is much smaller because we are approaching the midline and the size of the liver is getting smaller and smaller towards the left side. The main bulk of the liver is on the right side. Behind the liver, you can see here, and even it is grooving the liver, because this is a piece of the liver can be seen behind, this is the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava passes within the liver where it receives the hepatic veins and then it pierces the central tendon of the diaphragm to open into the right atrium of the heart. On the visceral surface of the liver, on this surface of the liver, inferiorly, you can see this large vessel is the portal vein. Of course, you can expect here to find the hepatic artery and the bile duct, but these are smaller structures and you would expect to find them anterior to the portal vein. But the portal vein is the biggest structure here 
and can be seen easily on the visceral surface of the liver at the porta hepatis. Here we can see loops of small intestine, jejunal loops superiorly and ileal loops inferiorly. In fact, this part of the small intestine is the duodenum. And you can see the relation. This is the first part of the duodenum. You can see its relation to the liver, to the visceral surface of the liver. The second part of the duodenum has been sectioned in this specimen. So you see the first part and the third part. This is the third part of the duodenum. And within the C shape of the duodenum, which has been sectioned here, you can see a piece of the pancreas. This is the pancreas, this is the head of the pancreas, and the uncinate process of the pancreas. Part of the transverse colon can be seen here. In the posterior abdominal wall, here is the sous major muscle. Anteriorly, in the anterior abdominal wall, actually it is the rectus abdominis that has been sectioned because we are approaching the midline. So the oblique muscles are no more present, only their aponeuroses persist. In the pelvis, you can see part of the urinary bladder here. This is the superior surface of the urinary bladder. This is the fourth section in our series, and in fact, this section is a mid-sagittal section. Within the vertebral column is the spinal cord, and this is the termination of the spinal cord at the lower border of L1 vertebra. Below that, the vertebral canal contains the coda equina. So this is the vertebral column here, the cervical region, the thoracic region, the lumbar, and the sacral, the sacrum here. Because this is a, a mid-sagittal section, anteriorly, you can see the sternum here. This is the manoberium of the sternum and the body of the sternum, and this is the xephoid process. This was not seen in the previous sections because in the previous sections we either see the ribs or the costal cartilages because we are away from the midline. In the region of the abdomen, here is the diaphragm. Below the diaphragm is the liver. Again, I would like to remind you that the size of the liver here is small because we are not on the right side. We are now in a midline section. So the, uh, we are actually sectioning the left lobe of the liver, the left anatomical lobe of the liver. On the visceral surface of the liver, this is the relation to the transverse colon. And you can see here a piece of the pancreas. In fact, this is the body of the pancreas. These loops here belong to the small intestine, small intestinal loops, and they extend down into the pelvis. This is the region of the pelvis. You can see here this is the promontory of the sacrum. And uh, this is the pubic symphysis here, a mid-sagittal section. That's why we can see the um, cartilage in the pubic symphysis in the midline. Behind the pubic symphysis is the urinary bladder here. This is the urinary bladder. And behind the urinary bladder, this is a male specimen. Behind the urinary bladder, this is the rectum. Above, this is a piece of the sigmoid colon, but here is the rectum. And you can see here that these are the transverse rectal folds here. The rectum will give rise to the anal canal. You can see the muscles around the anal canal that form the external and internal anal sphincter. More anteriorly, this is the root of the penis here. This is the crust of the penis which continues into the body of the penis as the corpus cavernosus. And here is the bulb of the penis, which continues into the body of the penis as the corpus spongiosum. 
anteriorly, the anterior abdominal wall, and this is the region of the umbilicus. Okay. And now, note the vertebral level of the umbilicus. It's almost the level of L4 vertebra. This is L4 vertebra here, L5, and these are the sacral pieces, S1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the umbilicus lies at the level of L4 vertebra. This is the fifth specimen in our series of sagittal sections. Actually, we started on the right side, and now we are approaching the left side of the body. You can see here, this is the diaphragm. Now, as I said, we are approaching the left side of the body. That is the left lobe of the liver. A small piece of the liver is only remaining. And here is the stomach, related to the left dome of the diaphragm. Below is the pancreas. This is the body of the pancreas. Behind the pancreas, the big vessel that is sectioned here is the splenic vein. This is the splenic vein. Part of the left kidney can be seen here. The kidney is surrounded by a layer of fat, perinephric and paranephric fat. Loops of the small intestine are shown here. And that is the transverse colon. In the posterior abdominal wall, we can see here part of psoas major muscle. Below, within the pelvis, this is part of the sigmoid colon giving rise to the rectum. This is the ampulla of the rectum here. In the anterior abdominal wall, with now we can see the three layers of the muscles again because we are away from the midline. And these are the costal cartilages. This is the sixth of our series of sagittal sections. You notice that this specimen has no head because the section goes lateral to the head. The section is on the left side of the body. We started from the right and now we are on the left side of the body. In the region of the abdomen, here is the diaphragm again. And below the diaphragm is only a very small piece of the liver that belongs to the left lobe of the liver. Posteriorly is the spleen. Again, the, the spleen has a diaphragmatic surface and has a visceral surface. The visceral surface of the spleen is related to the kidney, as you can see here, and it is related to the stomach as well. So this is the stomach. In this section, you can see a big piece of the stomach located because the stomach is located on the left side and we are sectioning the left side of the body. Behind the stomach is the pancreas. And this is again, behind the pancreas is the splenic vein. These are loops of small intestine here. In the loops of the small intestine, you can see the folds, the mucosal folds, the plechi circularis. Anteriorly, these are the costal cartilages and the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. You can uh, see the three layers of the muscles are shown here. Posteriorly, this is the hip bone and here is the iliac fossa with the iliacus muscle here and posteriorly is the this is this is the region of uh, quadratus lumborum and behind it is the erector spiny muscles